no society can surely be flourishing and happy, of which the far greater part of the members are poor and miserable. Mercy to the guilty is cruelty to the innocent. A nation is not made wealthy by the childish accumulation of shiny metals, but it enriched by the economic prosperity of its people. The first thing you have to know is yourself. A man who knows himself can step outside himself and watch his own reactions like an observer. It is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own interest. The real tragedy of the poor is the poverty of their aspirations. Man is an animal that makes bargains, no other animal does this. No dog exchanges bones with another. What can be added to the happiness of the man who is in health, who is out of debt, and has a clear conscience? Science is the great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Never complain of that, of which it is at all times in your power, to rid yourself. No complaint is more common than that of a scarcity of money. It is not for its own sake that men desire money, but for the sake of what they can purchase with it. Every man is rich or poor, according to the degree in which he can afford to enjoy the necessaries, conveniences, and amusements of human life. The game women play is, men. Labor was the first price, the original purchase, money that was paid for all things. It was not by gold or by silver, but by labor, that all wealth of the world, was originally purchased. Wherever there is great property, there is great inequality. The real price of everything, what everything really costs to the man, who wants to acquire it, is the toil and trouble of acquiring it. Individual ambition serves the common good. The disposition to admire, and almost to worship, the rich and the powerful, and to despise, or, at least, to neglect persons of poor and mean condition is the great, and most universal cause of the corruption of our, moral sentiments. There is no art, which government sooner learns of, another than that of, draining money from the pockets of the people. Nothing is more graceful than, habitual cheerfulness. The real, and effectual discipline which is exercised, over a workman is that of his customers. It is the fear of losing, their employment which restrains his frauds, and corrects his negligence. All money is a matter of, belief. Nobody but a beggar, chooses to depend chiefly upon the benevolence, of his fellow citizens. The great secret of education is, to direct vanity to proper objects. To feel much for others, and little for ourselves, that to restrain our selfish, and to indulge our benevolent affections, constitutes the perfection of human nature.